it's Tammy. Good morning. Um, this is Real Southern Woman, and we are on chapter 5 in our um, 30 Days to Understanding the Bible book by Max Anders. 30 Days to Understanding the Bible by Max Anders. For those of you who are doing the study, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, it is an amazing study, and you learn so much so fast. It is wonderful. And so far, we have um, learned, yesterday we learned about the creation era, and today we're going to learn about the patriarch era, okay, with Abraham. And um, hopefully you've been uh, following along and making notes if you don't have the book. And if you have the book, I hope that you've enjoyed it, because it really is a easy and great learning tool. Uh, today is chapter 5, and it's the Patriarch Era. And he starts out giving an example of two people trying to control their children and how they have a hard time. One is a couple who's, who uh, has the president of the college coming to eat dinner, and uh, they make sure everything is just to a T and perfect, and they don't think about the kids, I guess. And they sat him next to the two-year-old. And the two-year-old kept quietly asking to pa for him to pass her something, which is kind of hard for me to believe that a two-year-old would do, but I guess she did. I mean, my two-year-old would have never done that. Um, but she asked him to pass her the salt, which doesn't make sense for a two-year-old. But anyway, uh, and they were ignoring her, so she said, pass me the salt or I'll knock your block off. So I think it was probably not a two-year-old, but more like a, you know, maybe a five- or six-year-old. Anyway, then he talks about the President of the United States. He says he had, uh, Theodore Roosevelt had a daughter who was always up to stuff, and that one day when he was in his White House, he had a visitor there, and they were having a meeting, and the visitor um objected the girl wandering in and out of the president's office while he was conducting important business. And so Re Roosevelt said, I can be president of the United States or I can control Alice. I cannot possibly do both. <laughs> now, I like that one. That sounds more like it. Now, a man wrote this book, and I, it's a wonderful book, but I just don't think a two-year-old would say pass the salt. But, you know, sometimes men have a hard time with children and really knowing, <laughs> putting two and two together with kids. All right, they're not like us women, are they? That's why. Thank the Lord for mamas, right? Okay, this is the patriarch era. And um, it says it was a time when go of godly men uh, presiding over growing families. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph were successive generations of the same family. And they ruled over the Hebrew people in the earliest days of, the exist of the, their existence. Um, so it, the, it talks about how they ruled the people. And uh, so remember, when we talk about Abraham, he's in the land of Canaan. And remember that Canaan changes its name to Israel, but remember that doesn't happen until they ask to be ruled by kings, and King David is over it. So right now, if this is Abraham, so um, he's considered to be in Canaan. But he does have to move, okay? Abraham must have felt a little like um, Roosevelt, his descendants did not behave the way he wanted them to. It says he had a passion for God and what he wanted to do through the Hebrew people burned like a flame in his heart. But the flame dimmed in successive generations. Then it goes on to say that, however, the time of slavery in Egypt sharpened the spiritual hunger of the Hebrew people. And a great family, which became a great nation, emerged. Okay? So it says in here that once they were enslaved in Egypt, of course their spiritual hunger grew. And we find that that's the way, um, even in our own lives and other people's lives, that um, we tend to 
grow closer to God in times of need. And sometimes, you know, um, he does do things on purpose so that we feel like we need him again. Um, after we read this, he goes ahead. He gives us a blank, a fill in the chart blank, so that we can fill in the chart um, for the story of the Old Testament. And we go ahead and we put creation, Adam, Eden, and that storyline was Adam is created by God, but he sins, that's the blank we fill in, and he destroys, is another blank, God's original plan. So the three blanks are sins, destroys, and plan. And that's the error we talked about yesterday. Today, it's patriarch, Adam, Kate, I, I mean, I'm sorry, patriarch, Abraham, and Canaan. And we will complete the storyline after we talk about it, okay? Um, well, actually, he goes ahead and tells us what it is. He says the storyline is that Abraham is chosen by God to father a people to represent God to the world. Okay? It says there are four major men in the patriarch era. The first one, of course, is Abraham. The second is Isaac. The third is Jacob. And the fourth is Joseph. These are in Genesis. Uh, Genesis chapter 12 all the way through 50. We'll talk about these four major uh, patriarchs that rule the people, the Hebrew people. It says that Abraham, okay, I'm just going to, really that's all this lesson is, and then he does the self-tests in the back for you to go ahead and fill in the blanks of what we've already learned. He also has you draw a um, arrow on the map so that you get an idea of where Abraham lived and where he traveled to. Okay, and um, he actually lived near where the Garden of Eden was, where the Tigris and Euphrates rivers meet at the bottom in a place called Ur. And he moved from there because God asked him to leave his home country. And he moved from there and he went to Canaan. So he traveled a good little piece to uh, follow what God wanted him to do. But anyway, we'll talk about these four uh, major patriarchs. It says that Abraham, no, it says Abraham was the father of the Hebrew people. And the reason behind this, it says, is because Adam's sin, because of Adam's sin and the fall of man, God's attention was focused on a plan of redemption to, for mankind. So uh, he, wants his, he wants a people through whom he can work to produce a reflection of himself and through whom he can spread the message of redemption to the world. Okay? So he chooses Abraham uh, to become the father of the Hebrew people and promises him land, which is the country. He promises him seed, which is countless descendants, and a worldwide uh, timeless impact with blessings. Abraham lives in Ur, and he moves to Canaan, like I said a while ago. Abraham settles, and he has two sons, which are Ishmael and Isaac. Isaac is the second patriarch. So we have Abraham and then Isaac. And Isaac becomes the second father of promise. Um, it doesn't say a lot about Isaac. It just says he witnesses a lot of miracles in his time. He lives in the land of Abraham. He becomes prosperous and he dies in old age, having fathered two sons, Esau and Jacob. Now, y'all know the story of Esau and Jacob um, and how Esau was the hairy one and liked to hunt and Jacob was more of a literary guy. He liked to read and, and anyway, he steals the birthright of Esau and so he becomes the father of of the nation of Israel, that is Jacob, okay? So we have a father of the Hebrew people in Abraham, a father of promise in Isaac, a father of the nation of Israel in Jacob, and with Joseph we have the leader in Egypt.
Anyway, Jacob, it says, um, he begins his life as a conniving scoundrel. And um, through a series of miracles and other encounters with God, he mends his ways. Jacob has 12 sons. Okay? It says, the promises of Abraham are passed down to them all as a family. It says that Abraham is the father of the Hebrew people, but Jacob is the father of the nation of Israel because from his 12 sons emerged the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay? So you start with Abraham, then you have Isaac, and then Isaac's son, Jacob, is the uh, father of the nations. He has 12 kids that are the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. Then the last but not least is sweet Joseph, who was sold by his brothers, all those 12 kids that his daddy had. There was some mean ones in the bunch. And they sold Joseph, and Joseph winds up in a position to save his family. So Joseph is our last patriarch in the patriarch era, okay? It says, um, because of Joseph's righteousness, he rises and becomes a great leader in Egypt. And um, during the famine, his family comes to Egypt. They reunite with Joseph, and they enjoy peace and comfort. After Joseph dies, however, the people are enslaved. For the next 400 years. This is the time that the trial sharpens the spiritual hunger of the Hebrew people. And they cry out to God for deliverance. And we know that that is when, uh, it's not in this chapter, because this is about the patriarch. But the next chapter is the Exodus era, which is the one where Moses goes and gets them and pulls them out of there, and we will talk about that tomorrow. So it was a really fast and short lesson about the patriarch era. So now we have went through the um, creation era, and now the patriarch era. And so if you're taking notes, just put the patriarch era, um, put Abraham as the figure, Canaan, is the location and the summary that he wants us to learn about this patriarch era is Abraham is chosen by God to father a people to represent God to the world. That was the whole purpose of the patriarch era and the purpose um, because we have the creation and man's fall, and now we have the patriarch era where God is uh, speaking to his people through these patriarchs, okay? I hope you've enjoyed this morning. It's pretty simple, isn't it? And, um, and we have a lot of blanks to fill in today in the book. And we've done that already. So, um, short, sweet, 15-minute Bible study, right? Um, we will say our prayers. And tomorrow, not tomorrow, but Monday, we will go over the uh, Exodus era, okay? It is Friday. Um, so, I'm so glad you all turned, tuned in. It was short, sweet, and simple. If you want to read a little bit more about the patriarchs, you can always go to Genesis chapter 13 through 50 and read a little bit more information, okay? Let's say our prayers today. Um, and Chris is sitting here. I might let him pray for us. <clears throat> you don't... Oh, he's, doing he's doing something. Um, his leg is a little better. Uh, it does have one little area that I don't like on the top, the way it looks. So we'll see how it does by the end of the day. Um, but I don't know if y'all know, but he has a staph infection in his legs from getting bit by ticks down at the, in Florida. I did have him get out yesterday and walk a good bit. So today he really does need to rest. Um, if it weren't for that one little place, I would say he could go back and exercise. But because it looks red and it's actually got a little bit of pus on the top of it, 
I'm a little bit weary of him going and doing anything today. So let's say our prayers and um, hopefully y'all see me today in the kitchen. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you that after the fall of man through Adam's sin, that you did still want to be with your people. You still wanted to uh, be close to us and that your plan has always been to have a relationship with us. And we thank you for that. And we know that later on in the New Testament, you provide that way through Jesus Christ so that we can uh, be close to you again without going through these laws uh, that you set down in the Old Testament for the people um, for their righteousness and um, forgiveness. We have all of that through Jesus Christ, and we just thank you so much for that. Help us as we go throughout our day. Be with Chris. I hope his leg does get better. And be with all my ladies um, and men who um, watch this Bible study. May they have a blessed and wonderful day in you. May, may our lights shine for you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And um, go have a cup of coffee if you had not had one already. Love ya. Bye. Thank you.